This is a video that goes over your Ionic Formulas homework assignment. This assignment is on the lesson calendar and you will actually copy uh, the questions and then into your notebook and then answer the ion symbols and chemical formulas for part one. Um, there's three parts, so this is part one. Part two, um, you're given the formula, you need to give the ion symbol and the compound name. And then part three, you will give the chemical formula and the compound name. So just keep in mind that you're copying this into your notebook and you do have to include the question in your answer. So if you want to make just like three columns, that would probably be the easiest way to do um, all three parts. So I'm going to do a few examples from each part um, so you get a good idea of what each of these sections is asking you to do. So you'll need um, your computer to get the questions on the lesson calendar. And then you'll also need your green periodic table or your periodic table with um, the ions on the back. So on the top you have cations and on the bottom you have the anions. Okay, so we will get into this with part one where we are given the um, compound names. And first we're asked to give the symbols and then from there the chemical formulas. So when you're given the name first, uh, what you want to do is use your ion list to find the formula um, or the ion symbols for each part of the name. So remember that in these names, the cation, the positive ion, is always given first. So for example, number two, we're going to start here, cuprous sulfite. So what you need to do is find each part of that name on your ions list. So cuprous, we're going to look on here and try to find cuprous. Remember, it's going to be in the cation section because it's first. Um, and it's right here, cuprous. So copper 1 or cuprous are both names for Cu+, the copper plus 1 ion. Okay, so you can use either of these names, copper with parentheses Roman numeral 1 um, or cuprous. But you need to be able to recognize both of those names. So for here, cuprous, it says that the ion symbol is Cu+. Plus. Okay, so that's the first ion, that's the cation. The anion is sulfite. So again, we want to look on our ions list. This time, uh, we'll look in the anion section because the negative ion comes second. Um, and sulfite, be very careful here. Sulfite is located right here. The formula is SO3 2 minus, um, but you want to be careful that you don't find sulfate. Very similar name, different formula. Okay, this one's SO4 negative 2. So for this particular compound, we want sulfite, which is SO3 2 minus. So I'm going to copy that here. Be very careful with your uppercase and lowercase letters in your subscripts and superscripts. Okay, so we have Cu plus SO3 2 minus. Now what we need to do is take these symbols and come up with their chemical formula. So remember, the chemical formula, the goal is to balance the charges of the ions. So we have a plus 1 here and a negative 2 here, which means that we need two of the coppers in order to balance the charge of the negative 2. Overall, we should have neutral charges on all of the formulas because the positive and negative charges on the ions will cancel out. That's the whole goal. So if I need two of the coppers, I show that with a subscript that I needed two of those. And then the SO3, negative 2, the sulfite ion, we just need one of those. So I'll copy its formula exactly, SO3. So remember, no charges, because that was the whole goal was to cancel the charges. So the formula is Cu2, SO3 for the first one. All right, so the next one, cupric sulfite. So very similar. We're going to look on our ions list and find cupric in the cation section. Um, cupric is right here. Okay, copper 2 or cupric, it's Cu now with a positive 2 charge. So copper is one of those ions um, that has two possible charges, so you just need to be aware of that and make sure you pick the right one. This one's cupric, so it's Cu 2 plus for the cation. The anion is again sulfite, same as the first one. So remember, sulfite is right here. SO3, 2 minus. Okay, so we have our two ions, and this time they already balance. Plus 2, minus 2. So these two ions already cancel each other out, so we just need one of each. So the copper, Cu, need one of those. And the sulfite, we need one of those. 
to write SO3 because that is its formula. Okay. Moving on to lead to nitrite. So when it's written with the Roman numerals, it's actually a little bit easier because the Roman numeral tells you the charge of the ion. Um, but just to be certain, we'll find lead 2 here. Okay, so it's lead parentheses with Roman numeral 2 um, is PB2+. plus. So that 2 plus corresponds with the 2 Roman numeral. So we'll write that ion first. That's our cation. The anion is nitrite. So nitrite, again, be very careful. We have both nitrate and nitrite. This one you want nitrite. So that formula is NO2 minus. The ITE ending always tells you that it's the anion with fewer oxygens. It doesn't tell you the exact number of oxygens, but it's always the one that's fewer. So with nitrate and nitrite, um, nitrate has three oxygens, nitrite has two oxygens, fewer oxygens for this one. So nitrite is NO2 minus. Okay, and now we balance the charges. So plus two, minus one, which means we need two of this entire nitrite ion. So the leads, lead ion, we need one. Nitrite, we need two. But remember that this is a polyatomic ion. It has nitrogen and oxygen in its formula, which means that if we need more than one of it, we have to use parentheses to show that we need two of this entire ion. So you have parentheses, write the formula for nitrite, and then outside of the parentheses, you put how many um, of that ion you need. We didn't need parentheses here because copper is not a polyatomic ion. Copper is monatomic. So we can simply put a two there to show that we needed two of the coppers. Here, nitrite is polyatomic, so we need the parentheses if we, if we need more than one of them. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip down to number seven, barium bromide. So barium, um, if we look here, we want barium bromide. So barium is right here on your ions list. Ba2 plus has a charge of positive two. Um, but I wanna point out that even if you didn't have your ions list, for an element like barium, you would know its charge because barium is located in the group two column of the periodic table, the alkaline earth metals, which this entire family likes to have a charge of plus two to get rid of their two valence electrons. So barium, you could know based on the location that it has a positive two charge. So write Ba2 plus, and then bromide is the anion, which bromide also is here, has a negative one charge. But again, where its location is on the periodic table will help you know the charge as well. So bromine is a halogen. This whole family likes to have a negative one charge to gain one more electron, right? So bromine, chlorine, fluorine, iodine, these will all have a charge of negative one. You just change the ending of their name to ide. That tells you that it's an ion and not the element. Um, so bromine is right here, but bromide, the ion of bromine, has a negative one charge. So it's B R minus. All right, and then to balance the charges, plus two, minus one, you need two of the BRs. And we don't need parentheses here because bromide is not polyatomic. So we can just write the two. All right, so those are the examples from part one. Okay, so remember you have to have the question and then you'll have these two columns for your answers. So let's move on to part two. Part two is slightly different. Now we are given a formula um, and we need to write the symbol and the compound name. So we'll start here with number 19. The um, formula is ZnBr2. So what you need to do is figure out what um, ions went into this formula. And you can use your ions list. So Zn here um, is the cation of the first formula. Remember the cation always comes first. Um, and if you find Zn right here, it is zinc with a two plus charge. Um, so we know that this is Zn two plus. Another way that you could have known that that has a two plus charge is if you recognized that it had bromide. Bromide is a halogen, which we just talked about, 
um, and those will always have a negative one charge. So if you know that that has a negative one charge, you needed two of them, which means this must have a charge of plus two to balance the two bromides that you had, okay? Um, so in the name, you could literally just copy and paste the names of each of the ions that were used. So the first ion is zinc. So we just write zinc as the first part of the name. The second part of the name, again, copy and paste the ion name. Br minus is right here. It is bromide. Remember we changed the ending, the IDE ending tells us it's an ion for the anions. So it's zinc bromide. Two words, zinc bromide. Okay, let's move on to number 24. Um, 24 here has CA3, PO4, 2. So you're going to start recognizing um, these polyatomic ions. You see PO4 is a polyatomic ion. Um, so if we're starting with the cation, you can really do either of these. Um, but CA, we can find calcium here, CA2+. Plus. Um, or, again, we know that calcium would have a 2 plus charge because it's is an, it is an alkaline earth metal, so it's in group 2, so it's always going to have a plus 2 charge. Um, and then PO4, if we search on our ions list, PO4 is right here, and it has a negative 3 charge. We also could have figured out that it has a negative 3 charge. Um, because of the way that the formula is balanced, right? Calcium has a two plus charge and we needed three of them, which means that this whole side of the equation has a positive six charge, right? Which means that this whole side of the equation needs to have a negative six charge. And since you have two of them here, that means each of these PO4s needs to have a negative three charge, um, and it does. So when we name this again, we're just copy and pasting the names from our ions list. So calcium, oops, <laughs> didn't mean to put a comma there. Calcium, and then PO4, three minus is phosphate. Well, it's easy fix. Calcium, phosphate. So two words, calcium, phosphate. That is the name. All right, this last one for part two that I'm gonna do is a little bit trickier. Um, so we have SN and then NO3, 4. NO3 in parentheses, 4. Well, if we look to figure out the charge of SN, we look on our ions list, and there's a little bit of a problem, okay? Because SN is both here and here. There are two ions of tin, tin 2 and tin 4. One has a charge of plus 2, and the other has a charge of plus 4. So you need to be able to figure out, given the formula, which one of these is the correct ion for this particular formula. In order to do that, you have to use the anion. Okay, so if we look at this formula, we have NO3 as the anion. So if we look down here, NO3 has a charge of negative 1. Okay, so if I were to write this out a little bit. Oh, I put it here. So NO3 in parentheses. This part of the ion, this ion, NO3, has a negative one charge, which means since you had four of them, this whole side of the formula um, has a negative four charge. Right? This whole side has a negative 4 because this was a negative 1 and you have 4 of them. So this is negative 4, which means this side of the formula needs to have a positive 4 charge to balance. Right? So you have to use the anion to figure out what charge the cation has. And it tells me that it's the positive 4, which means that when we look at our ions list, remember we had two options for tin, um, we figured out that it's the positive 4 version. So this is SN4+, plus, and then NO3 has a negative 1 charge. And then when we go to name it, 
you have a choice here. Remember, it's this version of tin. You can either write tin with parentheses Roman numeral 4 um, or stanic. So I like the stock naming, so I'm going to write tin 4. You can pick either version of the name. Tin 4. And then NO3. NO3 minus is nitrate. Okay, so it's tin for nitrate. If you wrote stannic nitrate, that is also correct. Okay, but you just have to write one name. All right, so that is part two. The tricky part is when you have to use the anion to figure out the charge of the cation. All right, moving on, last part, part three, couple of examples here. Now you are given the ions, you need to combine them to get a neutral chemical formula and then name it. Okay, um, so here we have K plus and S2 minus. Well, that means we need two of the potassiums to balance the negative two charge here. All right, so this number 28 is going to be K2S. So we needed two of the potassiums. When we go to name it, again, copy and paste these names. We used K plus, which is potassium. And we used S2 minus. Um, you'll probably start to just remember these, especially a lot of the um, anions. It's just the ide ending of their element name. And the cations, the regular metal ones, it's just the metal name. So here, S2 minus is sulfide. Okay, so that's number 28. Moving on to number 31, we have Ca2 plus and OH minus. So we have a 2 plus and a minus 1, which means we need two of those OHs. Okay, so when I go to write the formula, Ca, and then I need two of these. But remember, this is a polyatomic ion. It contains both oxygen and hydrogen, two different types of elements. So when I need more than one of them, like this case, I have to use parentheses. Right, because that's the formula, OH, and I needed two of them. So the two goes outside there. And now when we name this, CA is calcium. Probably knew that. And OH minus is right here. It is called hydroxide. So this is calcium hydroxide. So careful with that. Very, very common place for an error. It's not forgetting, or is forgetting to use those parentheses. All right, and then the last one we'll do here, number 33, we have Cu plus, NO3 minus. So these already cancel, plus one, minus one. So when we write the formula, Cu, and then NO3. NO3 is also polyatomic. Uh, but we don't need parentheses because we only needed one copy of it. So there's no need to put parentheses around it here. When we go to name this, remember to be careful here because there are actually two different coppers. So you have to make sure you use the correct one. And the formula we just made, we used copper with a plus one charge to so this one. So we have the option of either copper one or cuprous. So again, I'm going to use the stock naming copper one. And then the anion is NO3, which we've seen a lot. NO3 is nitrate. Okay, so if you wrote cuprous nitrate, that is also correct, but I chose to use the copper one nitrate name. All right, so that's just a few examples. That was part three. A um, few examples of each part one through three. Um, remember, this is to be done in your notebook. You need to include the question in your answer. So you'll have the question column and then the two columns for answers for each section. All right, so hopefully that makes more sense. Um, good luck and let me know if you have questions.